welcome to the Field of Streams, where I, your host, Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain, present them to you as though they're a new dance move that's absolutely going to slay the algorithm on TikTok for a hot 30 seconds, of which you will definitely own 15. Mmm, I'm too old for this. Now, I can't promise you much with these weekly foxtrots, but I can promise you this. I will not keep you long. Today's missive was inspired by a story I found that had the headline, Photographer accidentally captures amazing shot of a shooting star over an erupting volcano. You might be wondering what kind of story would be inspired by that particular headline, and I'm here to tell you that it it kind of got me thinking about sometimes magical things happen when you're trying to do the thing that you're not trying to do. And by that, I mean that maybe you're trying to get something done and it's not working out and you're getting all frustrated and depressed and I suck about how shit you are. And so you make a choice to step away from it. Just go do something else. Go for a walk, whatever. And then boom, either you have an idea that helps fix that thing or you have a completely accidental idea about something else that's just amazing. Day made. I do a better job of explaining this in the episode, trust me. But basically, what am I trying to say? Uh... Sometimes not thinking about things is the best thinking. Oh, God, I'm making it worse. You step away from the mess in your head and suddenly you're able to solve things. I'm talking about mental resets, I guess. This is all going to make sense in a minute. Basic premise, take a renovation vacation from your fixer-upper of a mind house. And without any further confusion boats sailing down my stream, here is the post. Situation derelict. Even that doesn't make any sense. Seriously, it's all going to make sense in a second. Or it won't, and we can just move on. This is my derelict mind. Can you feel the empty stillness of its neglected real estate? Light once flooded these vast hallways and rooms, seeping into cupboards and illuminating stairs to other levels of higher thought. But now... Now a silted, tea-soaked hue licks the walls and floors with its sallow tongue. With no creative spark to pay the rent or gas, and a heater that refuses to cough out ideas, there is but one choice. I will evict myself from this tenement of torment, fling my mind's door wide open, and stride out into the world. There is no hope here, just the steady trickle of motivation leaking down to a dank and dark basement within me. Don't even get me started on the fetid stench. But a derelict primed for demolition mind state is not a permanent mind state. Never forget this. Mental markets swing in that big band freeform way and one day derelict, next day divine. And today it teems with excitable voices, loud, soft, whispering, full-throated. What was yesterday a broke-down hovel of lost hope is today a motivated mansion of purposeful productivity. This mind palace is filled with conversation, love, passionate debate, and laughter. It's a warm place to be on days like this, with a heat that rises on the breath of possibility, a heat so powerful it can change the temperature of a room. In this mind, ideas dine with each other at long, pastry-laden tables, and you can easily walk the floors sockless and never get cold feet. Don't even get me started on the intoxicating aroma. But... This is not a permanent state either. Come tomorrow and the mind market takes a dive and here we are again, back on the doorstep of 666 Hollow Husk Avenue. A stickiness of spirit soaks the carpet as my bare feet squish and slide on the anguish of creative emptiness. Neglect seeps from tears in the peeling wallpaper. There is the low gurgle of desperate abandonment emanating from cracks in the floorboards as the mind becomes, yet again, uninhabitable. It violates several county health codes, and as the walls close in, I will once again do what is necessary. I will stride out the door of it, and away. An inside mind like mine must occasionally live outside itself to survive. This I know. But how to live outside the state of your mind on days like this? How to begin the renovation process so you can return to it? Because you must return. There is no true escape from your derelict mind. There is only the constant of creative reconstruction. I can only say what works for this mind, which has a habit of slipping into the derelict state easily and often. And what I'll say is this. 
it's perfectly reasonable to swing that big mind door open and stride out and away for a spell. It'll do you good. Your mind, in its unlivable state, is simply a work in progress, a fixer-upper, if you will. It ebbs and flows between the states of derelict and divine, the fix and the up, and it's the up that you need to find to do the fix, and you can really only do that by leaving, by looking outside of yourself. But a word of warning. This circle of DIY never ends. You're going to restump the whole structure, and you're going to be restumping again and again and again for the rest of your life. From the mundane to the stimulating, from the trivial to the intense, these will be the inputs, the stumps, that will rebuild you. This is how bigger and better blueprints are drawn. This is how you get the rats out of your basement. To fumigate and renovate, you've got to investigate. Fling wide the door and go for a walk and get ice cream. Admire people's gardens along the way. Lay down in the grass and close your eyes. Can you feel the sun on your eyelids? Is it making weird colours? Read a book or a magazine or a comic. Write a letter. Watch a film or binge some television. Don't feel bad about it. What did you like about what you watched? What did you hate? Talk to a friend about trivial things. Talk to a friend about deep, deep things. Get into the heart of the artichoke. Bake some cookies. Look at art. Say, that's not art, and defend your stance. Draw a picture. Don't judge your smudges too harshly. Go camping. Stare at the sky, but not the sun. Stare at the sea. Stare at nothing at all. Just step away. 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 When you feel better, only then should you walk back up the path to your mind. Say to yourself as you approach the threshold, This mind is my forever mind. I must fill it when it is empty. I must redecorate when it is sad. To do anything else is a creative dereliction of duty. Collect all manner of DIY reconstruction materials. Gather new curtains of creative inspirations as you restock, rebuild and reanimate your derelict mind. And through it all, be open to the outside. The tools you need are scattered everywhere, ready to be hooked to your tool belt. So keep your eyes peeled, because you never know what will happen while you're out there, not thinking about your run-down creative mind manner. You might just catch a volcano and a meteor in the same frame. And won't that be something worth hanging in your mind's vestibule? And there you have it. This week's episode, I think I got around to the point. I hope, I hope I did. I put a link in the description to the photo of the volcano and shooting star in the same frame. It looks photoshopped, but apparently it's not. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow and show your support by sharing it with your friends so I can get more eyes through ears punters experiencing my writing. I also hope you'll come back for more. These little missives are designed to inspire creative folk to get out there and make something of their own. If you do enjoy my writing, please be sure to subscribe to the stream newsletter at janemacrae.substack.com. And until next we meet, love what you love, and I'll see you out there making the stuff.